and welcome to our Tenebrae service. Today is not only Maundy Thursday, but it marks two weeks since lockdown. And so I bring you greetings from our home to yours. And though we are not gathered together uh, in person, we are united by God's love and by our love for each other. The word Tenebrae means shadows. And this service, uh, we journey with Jesus as the shadow of death fell upon him. The way in which we do that is we're going to read Mark's telling of the last 24 hours of Jesus' life from Mark chapter 14 and verse 15. There will be seven readings and seven candles. And after each reading, uh, one of the candles will be extinguished until we are in total darkness. And then we will sit in silence for a minute. And after that, we'll light the candle, which reminds us of the hope that is ours because of the resurrection of Jesus. I want to invite you as we read these readings just to engage all of your senses and your imagination, to try and imagine yourself being there. What were the sounds that you could hear? What were the sights that you could see? And, uh, and so to make vigil with Jesus during his final hours. If you have candles uh, with you at home uh, and you are going to be extinguishing them throughout the service, then I want to invite you, if you haven't already lit them, to pause the video and to light them now. And now let us come before God in prayer as we begin this time together. Let us pray. Eternal God of mercy, we gather in awesome wonder to behold your loving gift of Jesus Christ, who coming to bring the world to wholeness was broken by it. Yet by his death we live and know your unbreakable love. As we gather now, separated by lockdown but united in your love, we recall our frail failings of devotion, pierce our hearts with the conviction of our own betrayals, reassure us of your abiding presence, and transform us by the Spirit of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Adam is going to turn out the lights now, and if you have any lights on, I invite you to turn them out in your home as we begin our reading uh, and the tenebrae part of the service. Mark 14, verses 26 to 31. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. You will all fall away, Jesus told them, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter declared, even if all fall away, I will not. Truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, today, yes, tonight, before the rooster crows twice, you yourself will disown me three times. But Peter insisted emphatically, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the others said the same. Shadow of Sorrow, Mark 14, 32 to 42. They went to a place called Gethsemane and said, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. And he said to them, Stay here and keep watch. Going a little further, he fell to the ground and prayed that, if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? 
Watch and pray so that you will not fail into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping, because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough! The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of the sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Mark 14, verse 43 to 45. Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Now the betrayer has arranged a sing signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Mark 14, verses 46 to 52. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. Then one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Am I leading a rebellion, said Jesus, that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you, teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. A young man, wearing nothing but linen garments, was following Jesus. When they seized him, he fled naked, leaving his garment behind. Mark fourteen fifty three to fifteen fifteen, the shadow of trial. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the teachers of the law came together. Peter followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. There he sat with the guards and warmed himself at the fire. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death, but they did not find any. Many testified falsely against him, but their statements did not agree. Then some stood up and gave this false testimony against him. We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with human hands and in three days will build another not made with hands. Yet even then, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, said Jesus and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes. Why do we need any more witnesses, he asked. You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as worthy of death. Then some began to spit at him. They blindfolded him, struck him with their fists and said, Prophesy! And the guards took him and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You also?
so were with that Nazarene, Jesus, she said. But he denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about, he said, and went out into the entryway. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, This fellow is one of them. And again he denied it. After a little while, those standing near said to Peter, Surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. He began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know this man you're talking about. Immediately, the rooster crowed the second time. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept. Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. So they bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again Pilate asked him, aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of. But still Jesus made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. Now it was custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? asked Pilate, knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Mark 15, verse 16 to 32. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, that is, Praetorium, and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews. Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to them. To him. And when they mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led out him out to crucify him. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the fa father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it, and they crucified him. Dividing up his clothes, they cast lots to see what each would get. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, he, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him.
The Shadow of Death, Mark 15, verse 33 to 47. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, Listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down. With a loud cry, Jesus cried his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and when the centurion saw who stood there in front of Jesus, saw how he died, he said, Surely this man was the Son of God. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph, Joseph and Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women had come up with him to Jerusalem also there. It was preparation day, that is the day before the Sabbath. And as evening, so as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. When he learned from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph bought some linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in the linen, and placed it in a tomb cut out of rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph saw where he was laid. And so let us pray. So God, as we travel with you to Calvary, we feel the weight of your suffering. We feel the weight of the sin and the brokenness of the world that you took upon your shoulders and that you took to the cross. And this cross reminds us that you, this candle reminds us that you broke the power of sin and death through your saving work on the cross for us. And we look forward with hope to the celebration of the empty tomb. Amen. Go in peace and may you experience the power of God's love for you yet again this Easter weekend. Amen.